All right, Angelina. Angelina, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Um, I like to just say I'm from South Jersey because um, I moved in a lot of different cities. So South Jersey, it's like 15 minutes from Philly, so. Okay, and tell me about your family. So um, I have a twin brother and three other sisters. Um, my mom and dad, they met in high school, high school sweethearts kind of. Um, they had my older sister in 99, um, me and my twin in 01. Um, growing up, uh, early childhood memories, really all, I, it's, all it's all chaotic, really. Um, just a lot of chaotic memories. Um, where do I begin? <laughs> um, yeah, so unfortunately, my, both of my parents, they were using drugs. Um, while they had us, um, so that caused a lot of issues in my house. My father, he um, he is an alcoholic and a drug addict, so that combination is just even worse. Um, so we can start with elementary school. Um, I don't really remember much about it, just because, like I said, I was moving around too much. Um, so. I want to say, um, I think it was, so it was when I was eight, so third grade. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. It's hard to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll just start, we'll just start with the big thing. Um, this is kind of how I timeline my life based off of my trauma. So when I was eight years old, I started being molested by my father. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot because at the time I didn't know my mom. She didn't really talk to us about like sexual education. She didn't teach me anything about like what, you know, what was on my body. Um, so I didn't really know what was happening at the time. Um, so the abuse would happen um, mainly at night. I, I would be really, I would be woken up out of my sleep, half asleep. Um, I, um, yeah, I just, I remember being woken up and I am on my, my dad's shoulders. So like he was carrying me like from my bed down, downstairs. Um, yeah, so I remember, can we, can we go into it all? Or? Sure. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there was times where, um, like that time I said, he grabbed me on, like he put me on his shoulder, took me downstairs. Um, I remember him placing me like on the floor and I remember him telling me to take my underwear off and he kind of like put me he put me onto his lap and it's it's really hard to remember because you know I did go through um you know the whole criminal that process and everything and um they couldn't they couldn't convict him with anything because I don't remember if there was any penetration involved so these memories that I'm sharing with you, they're more so just like images, you know, flashes. Cause I was really young, eight years old, you know, I don't remember much from that time. So, but um, these have stuck with me. They really have. Um, like I said, I remember being taken from my bed. Um, there was a time when, um, I don't know where my mom was. I can't remember these times where my mom was like, I, I try to think back and I really just can't, but I was in her and my dad's room and I was sitting on the bed watching TV and then my dad comes in and um, he, he asked me something along the lines of, can I, can I do it? And I didn't, I had no idea what he's talking about, but you know, I kind of got like a nervous kind of feeling. So I was just like, no, 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 no. Um, 
because I didn't know what he was asking for, but it just didn't feel right. So I said no. And then um, I tried to get away from that room to go into the kitchen. Um, I think I wanted a snack or something. And he follows me in there. I, I remember this. And he's continuously asking me the same question over and over again. Can I do it? Can I do it? Say no. I go back into the room. He follows me in the room once again. This time he comes, sits on the bed next to me, and he starts poking me like, in my stomach like over and over and over and over again can I do it can I do it please let me let me do it and like to this day I don't like people touching me on my sides because it just it it brings me back to that um but um so that was an instant that I remembered um See, you know, I wanted to go through therapy so I can remember more details. It's natural to block how, it out, right? Yeah, it's, it's really crazy what your brain does to hide, you know, and cope with the trauma you've been through. Um, your sister went through it as well? Yeah. Um, so let me give you the story some more. So, um, so middle school, it was kind of, it felt rushed to me because I was dealing with um, that trauma and also besides the sexual abuse, um, you know, it was constantly fighting in the house. My mom and dad screaming all of the time, throwing things, and it was all just really, like I said, it was chaotic. So middle school kind of just flew by for me. Um, so when I was 12, um, my mom and dad, I remember one day I woke up and, um, my dad, he was causing all this commotion, commotion, and I go out there to see what's going on, and um, he's packing all his things. So I, um, you know, I'm trying to listen on in on them and see what, what's going on, and um, my dad, apparently, he had met this new woman, and he was, he was just leaving, just, just to go, go and live with her. And it was just crazy to me because, you know, he, ne he didn't, uh, me and my siblings, you know, we were all living together with him and my mom and literally the day of that he moves, he tells us, okay, bye. I'm going with some other random woman and that's it. So I remember that day though, it was a fight. My mom, she, I know they just wanted to pre protect us. We were kids and you know, we don't need to know about all the other, you know, stuff going on. But mm, my mom, I remember she was really upset about it and she was trying to get in his way to, to block him from leaving and um it was just it was yelling back and forth and i think um i think this t there was a few incidences where he um my dad put his hands on my mom um and i think i think to get past her he had to do something like that because she was crying hysterically after he left and you know it was just it was a lot. So, so yeah, so, um, so he goes and lives with that woman. And so now we start high school. Um, during the summer between middle school to leading up to when I started high school, um, you know, we were meeting his new girlfriend and we were getting to know her and she had kids as well. So we made it work. Um, um, at the same time, when my mom left him, um, she got her own apartment. And so we would go over there all the time. Um, but primarily when during that summer, we transferred over and started living with my, um, my dad and his, his girlfriend at that time um, permanently for high school. So um, during that summer, um, I, we were going over my mom's house and my dad would be coming over there. And... We didn't think anything of it. Like we thought, um, you know, he just wanted to check in on us or, you know, talk to her, chat it up a little bit. Um, but that wasn't what was going on. My dad was coming over to, you know, have sexual relations with my mom. And later we found out um, that my mom, she had gotten pregnant with twins from my dad. And it's like, how do you put your kids through that whole situation up and leave to go be with some random woman and then you cheat on her with our mom like 
it was just so confusing and it was it really it really just having to go through all that trauma of you know that whole fight initially and having to deal come to terms with okay mom and dad aren't going to be together no more so you have to you know you have to compromise and um yeah it was just it was really confusing um it was really confusing but I, with me going back to my trauma, I didn't know what had happened and I didn't tell anybody what had happened. Um, so I kind of just swept it under the rug. How long did it go on? Um, from when I was eight to 11 years old. So um, it wasn't, I don't remember it being like every single night. Like I said, the memories are kind of just like flashes of like different um, incidents, but um but it was periodically from when I was eight years old to 11 years old. Um, and so freshman year, um, it was all right. Like I said, it kind of just flew by. I was adjusting to having to live, go back and forth between two different places. Um, yeah, and so 10th grade comes along. Uh, this is 2017. Um, same thing uh that year in school was pretty much just um just fly by like for me i feel like i'm undiagnosed but i think i have adhd because i just feel like i i don't know i tend to i feel like i'm not really living in the moment and i'm more so focusing on like too much i'm worried about everything else and if everything else is okay and you know what's going to go on tomorrow so i don't i don't know <laughs> what that is but um so 10th grade that was whatever summer of that year um uh yeah so two days before my little sister's birthday um july 2nd we had a graduation party for um one of my stepmom's sons and um i remember <sighs> Um, I remember being woken up out of my sleep and, you know, like when you're half asleep and if there's like somebody around you, you, you can't make out what they're saying, but you just like kind of start to hear the noise. Um, so, you know, I heard a noise at first and it woke me up. So I sat there for a minute and I'm like, okay, let me see. And so I clearly could hear, um, my little sister, um, she was crying and she was like whimpering and crying and I immediately ran to turn on our bedroom light and I see my dad run up out of her bed and leave our room and as soon as I saw him do that um I think everything hit me like because I didn't process what had happened to me even though I knew some like as I got older into high school, I knew something had happened to me, but I didn't I couldn't I didn't have a name for it. I didn't know what had happened. So I think once I saw him leave, things started to click. And then um so I he immediately runs out of the door and um I I asked my little sister, I said, you know, what just happened? And she's hysterical. She tells me that um, he was, he came, he crawled into her bed behind her and he was trying to remove her underwear. He was trying to pull down her underwear. And she was, she told me she was trying to hold them up and, and he, he was telling her to be quiet. And then she cried some more. And then that's when I woke up and yeah, that was, I think that experience really awoke something in me. Um, I think I started to realize the abuse that was going around, going, that happened to me. Um, and so with that, um, I just remember that night I had, I told, because we had separate beds, like it was across from each other. So she was in her bed and I told, I brought her into my bed um and i i just remember i had um 
on my phone, I was, I, I had her, I was cuddling with her, trying to, you know, calm her down and get her to go back to sleep. And um, I remember on my phone, I had 911 there on the, the keypad ready to go. And I was really contemplating it because, um, you know, I wish somebody, you know, knew something was going on when that happened to me. And um, I didn't do it. And I think today that's one of my biggest regrets is not calling the police. Um, when I saw him come out of the bed because I don't know what could have happened. Um, I didn't call them because at the time my mom, she was really heavy on drugs. Like I said, she was living in her own apartment, but she was really, she couldn't, she wasn't fit to take care of us. So, um, so, you know, I was like, well, what if they put us into um, foster care? Because growing up, um, I do have experience with that. We had to be placed in into a foster home. It was actually wild. They, I don't know why they did this, but they put us into a home where everybody there, they only spoke Spanish. And we were there for like a month, a little over a month. And I'm just, I don't know how we got through it, but thank God I was there with my sub siblings. But, oh yeah, it was just, that, yeah, that experience, that, that really, that started turning the wheels in my head. And, um, yeah, then I started, you know, to be more aware. And, um, I, I don't know what would have happened if I called the police. But, Yeah, that was... You were how old? At that time, I was 16, and my little sister was 11. So, um, yeah, that was, that was that. After that happened, um, again, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want to tell his, um, his wife because I thought she would, you know, go to the police or something. So, um, you know, it was, it was all kind of just like... It was a weird, it was a bad time that night. And um, after that, my dad, he didn't bring it up. He didn't, he didn't say anything like that. The next morning, I think um, he told us what he was making for dinner or he told us what, yeah, what he was doing for dinner. He was making crabs or something. And he like, cause I, we all really like crabs and seafood. So he was like, hey, I'm, I'm doing that tonight. How's that sound? And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, do you know what I just saw you do last night? Like, so, so that happened. Um, and again, I, I just pushed that, I brushed it under the rug, just like what happened to me um, before that. And I think I was on, um, I was on auto in high school. I, I really, it was just, it was mediocre for me. I, you know, I, I tend to have, I had little friend groups that I was bouncing from, nothing permanent. I didn't have like one single best friend. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel, if it wasn't for my twin brother, I feel like I would have had a really, really hard time. Elementary school, middle school, and high school, me and him, we just, we stuck together. You know what I'm saying? Did you feel like what happened with your father was affecting your life at that time? When I was in high school? Like when or, you were in high school, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know it at the time, but, you know, I started developing, like, really bad anxiety. And even now, I'm, I'm not on any medication or anything. And I think definitely in high school, I started developing the anxiety um, I was finally able to put the word to it. Um, I don't, I don't like the word molestation. I don't know. It's kind of, it's weird to me, but that's what happened. I was molested. Um, and so I started doing my research, you know, about different things on that. And I started educating myself because my mother hadn't. So I was able to learn exactly, you know, not exactly, because like I said, I can't remember certain things about it, but um, for the most part, I was able to pick up, pick up on what happened. And um, 
So high school, at that time, it was, so I was living with my dad still and his wife. And um, I don't know, I think, I really believe that you can't heal in the environment that hurts you. Um, just because I think I was so blindsided. I, w I was just blind to what was going on around. I knew, I knew I wasn't living in, in the best situation. I knew my father wasn't a good man. And your mom wasn't of any help. Yeah, she was just in her own little world. Um, yeah, it was just, it was still continuing from when my dad was with my mom, the yelling, the screaming, the throwing, the same thing when he got with his new wife. And it just, it really wasn't good. And then he had a daughter with, with his wife. Your mom had the twins? Yeah. Yeah, when, uh, that summer. And, and his wife didn't find out? She found out. It, yeah, she found out. Um, it was, it was just... It was a lot. I think we were all in a way because, you know, she's been through her own stuff and uh, he's got he's got a way over people. I don't know why, but he uh, like you can't help but feel bad for him sometimes. I know I say that because he's my dad, but my you know, I feel like even his family like you know, they they would say the same things like, yeah, he's, you know, he's an alcoholic, he'll throw things, but, um, you know, that's just how he is. He's fine. He's cool. You know, everybody would come over for like the barbecues on the weekend and stuff. And, you know, after that, we would have to go back to, you know, the darker side of it. But, um, so after, after high school, I graduated in 2019. Um, that's when I got my first boyfriend, um, in high school. I didn't want nothing to do with nobody. I was like, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I didn't even have my first kiss until I was 18 or 19. So um, everything was new to me. I didn't have experience with anything. The only experience I had with relationships was seeing my mom and dad and how they treated each other. And um, so there was a situation that had happened. Um, when I was 18, I got into a, a fight with my dad over something and I had enough. I was just like, you know what? I don't want to be here. I think it's time for me to try to move on. And so my boyfriend at that time, we were looking for places and um, yeah, we, we got a place together and I moved out of my dad's house and started living with him. Um, that relationship, it was, it was much needed. But I feel like it was unnecessary in a way because um, it, was, it was great in the beginning. I had met this guy at work and um, it was great. You know, he was sweet talking me, saying all the right crap and I fell for it. And so we moved in with, the, you know, we moved in with each other. Um, and then I think, I think it was three months into our relationship, there was a time when I, I was visiting him before he, um, before I had to go to work and I dropped him off at his house and then, um, I drove to work and, um, I remember he had left his phone in my cup holder and I didn't notice it until I arrived at work and, um, ladies do not check your man's phone. Please, if you want peace, just do not check your man's phone. Um, I didn't even know his passcode. I was like, maybe it's his birthday. And I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. I opened the text messages up. The first thing I see is some girl, the top of his phone, you know, asking him when's the next time he's gonna see her or something like that. And I just remember like my heart dropped. Oh, I was so gutted and I had to go to work then and I'm I, I I remember I went in and I don't know what I told them but I was like listen I'm sorry I gotta leave like something just happened I gotta go I'm sorry but I could not do it I like I, I can't go like oh I don't know it was just that that was crazy to me and I just remember it was crazy because when he left his phone in my car that trip that was the same day he told me he loved me. The first time he told me he loved me. And I, and then I find that and I'm I'm just like, are you kidding me? So 
I was really tempted. I was tempted to throw his phone on the highway and, you know, never talk to him again and just go home. But I was, you know, whatever. So I went to his house, I dropped his phone off and um, I kind of just gave him this look and he knew something was wrong. He didn't say anything and I, I just left and um, went home. But then um, I think I was really upset about that for a few, like a week or so. And then somehow, some way, he roped me back in and, you know, I was able to forgive him, I guess, and um, be with him still. And I Is just- Is that a product of how yes, you dealt with your dad? Yes, yes. Um, it's just, I, I used to beat myself up over it because I remember being a child and, you know, watching my dad and my mom get in these fights. And, you know, I would hear, you know, whatever story it was that he cheated on her or he did whatever. And um, I always told myself, I would, I, I would always say, you know, like, if, you know, my boyfriend cheated on me, you, you, I, you're not going to see him back with me. There's no way, no way in hell I would be back with him, you know? And, um, I think watching my mom tolerate so much abuse from my dad definitely, definitely, um, kind of subconsciously programmed into my brain that, you know, it's okay to tolerate certain things from men. So that had happened. Um, I took him back. We moved out, got an apartment together. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just wanted to be away from that environment I was in. And honestly, once once I did move out, I, that's really, really when the gears started turning in my head. And I was f like fully able to process like that that man's he's he's not a good man. Like there's something wrong with him. He's clearly a pedophile. And something, something needs to happen soon. Because like I said, he also had a daughter with um, his new wife. So for the first few years, up until 2000, last year, I think it was last year that, yeah, the beginning of last year, I reconnected. Um, so when I moved out of my dad's house, I stopped talking to him and his wife. Um, this is kind of jumping back, but I forgot to add this, like go going in, like growing up in the house with my dad and his new wife. Like I told you, my mom, she was, you know, heavy on the drugs. So it was hard, you know, to be, to interact with her and get much help from her. So in her place, I feel like my stepmom, I, I owe her a lot. She, she really filled in that motherly kind of role. She, um, she knew structure. She taught us how to do, chores. She, um, you know, helped us get jobs when we were 16. She, she I feel like without her, she, I don't know where we would have ended up. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I don't, sometimes it kind of scares me, you know, what would have happened if I did call the police because we could have ended up somewhere way worse. Um, but still it is, it was pretty bad, but, um, she was a help in all of this. Um, and so I reconnected with her, um, like I said, last year. And um, so I reconnected with her because, you know, it doesn't sit right with me. You know, knowing what I know now, piecing all the pieces that, you know, needed to come together. And um, I started kind of just like dropping hints to her that something wasn't right with him. I didn't, at first I didn't tell her like flat out what had happened. I kind of just like, I forget what I said, but something along the lines of like, he's no good or something like that. And um, these times I would do that, she she wouldn't really ask too many questions, but then there was this one time, um, so a few months ago, we'll bring it up to now because our relationship, we, we really just like, you know, we'll check in on each other, text, um, I'll visit her. Um, and all that, but um, I reconnected with her a few months ago, or no, I, not a few months ago, I told you I reconnected with her last year. Um, and so a few months ago, I was talking to her again, and I was texting her, and I was like, I said the same thing, you know, like, it's not okay, he's not, he, I, I, 
I don't know how I worded it. I was trying to be like, I was trying to say it without saying it, but she, she, um, she, she said like, tell me like flat out what, what had happened. So I told her what happened that night with my little sister and, um, immediately she, she was, she was going, she was going crazy. She didn't know how to react. I mean, how do you react when, you know, somebody tells you that, you know, your partner is a pedophile or, you know, that they tried to molest their daughter. Like, that's, that's very, I, you know, somebody told me about that, like, told me that I, I just wouldn't know how to react. So, you know, she, she was, she was really shook at first, but, um, as she calmed down, you know, the next few days, she's talking to me, she's supporting with me. And, um, she tells me that she's, she, she also suffered, um, some type of child abuse, she suffered some sexual child abuse, and um, she confided in that to me, and, you know, we became even more closer these last few months, and so I asked her if she would come with me to go report my dad. I, I have been, before I did this a few months ago, I, from when I moved out, something in my soul, I just, I, I wanted so badly to tell somebody else and um, I knew it was time to try to report him before anything else could happen. So she came with me to the police station. If she didn't come with me, I would have never went. Um, so I really thank her for that. And yeah, like I said, um, unfortunately, cause you know, the cops, they need those details, those really important details. I can't remember, you know, fully what happened. So. They said, listen, you don't have any proof, so there's really nothing we can do, I'm sorry. And that was pretty much it. So, um, and because of what happened to my little sister happened at a different house, I have to go and handle that at a whole, that whole county. So it's, that's a whole different thing. Um, so nothing ever came of it? Not of my situation, no, but I'm hoping that something will be for my little sister because I don't, I don't wanna give up. I, I think it's, how do you, how do you have two daughters telling, telling you that their father, he molested me and he tried to molest her. How are you hearing that? And you're not, there's nothing that can be done about it. I just, it's hard for me to understand. So, um, going through that whole process, it was a lot because, um, you know, like I told you, I didn't talk to anybody. I haven't been to a therapist. Um, the At that time, it was my stepmom that I told it to. And then I started that process. And having to talk about it is extremely hard. I remember walking into the police station. I was, like, so shaky. And But I, I do remember, as soon as that was over, I talked to the detective. I did feel a lot better. I, f I felt a lot of weight lifted off of my shoulders. Um, but that's when, because this is, this is still pretty recent. This, this was in May that that happened. Um, or was it May? It was April, May. Um, the end of April into May. And um, I feel like this has also kind of created a little bit more um, like mental health issues for me. I'm not gonna lie. How does it affect you today? Yeah. Um, I feel like it makes, it makes living hard for me. Um, because I have a full-time job. Um, I try to go to the gym as much as I can throughout the week and I do have hobbies. So, um, for me, that's why I was saying I think I have ADHD because I, I tend to take on so much and, and then I, I forget things. Um, It's definitely, it, I do, I do ask, I ask, you know, I'm, I'm a spiritual person, but you know, God, whoever you got, you believe in, um, I ask why, why I was born with the parents that I was born with, um, 
you know, I just, why did I have to suffer that abuse and then have to witness it almost happening again to my little sister? And, you know, I'm only 21, so I'm, I'm just, I'm freshly an adult. I'm still, I'm navigating life. And it's just having to have a full-time job and, you know, paying, I, I pay my bills, I take care of my responsibilities, but it just gets to a point where it feels so overwhelming that some days I just, I feel so defeated. And, um... It's a lot. I mean, I, I cry a lot, but I'm not ashamed of it. I think crying helps a lot. Um, I was watching this video the other day about childhood trauma and how it affects us. And somebody in the comments said, um, you know, babies from birth, they cry to heal um, themselves and their trauma. And it can only it can only help if they're being nurtured by those around them. For example, like, um, you know, you're, you're young, like three or four, you're crying because, you know, you couldn't get, you know, the cookie you wanted and, you're, and you know, your mom's screaming at you, no, like, stop crying, like, you're not getting that, blah, blah, blah. And it, it subconscious, subconsciously, it makes you think, you know, showing your emotion and, you know, expressing how you feel isn't okay. And, I think that's, in a way, that's kind of what I did. I saw the people around me in my environment, you know, take on the abuse they were taking on, whether that be mentally, verbally, physically, whatever, and kind of just sweep it under the rug. So, like I said, growing up through middle school, high school, I just, I really just, somehow my brain just really just put it back there and I didn't touch it again until after I moved out. And so, um, yeah, I love crying, but it's annoying though. It, it is also annoying because, you know. But it seems like going through that, you carry it with, especially because it ha isn't really resolved. Mm -hmm. Your dad is still out free, right? Yeah, yeah. It seems like it kind of dissipates your ability to focus or yeah. do anything in life. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I do have a partner now and He's he's been by my side while I'm going through this this process and with the you know detectives and all that and he was telling me like you know it's it's not gonna give you any healing you should you should just you know he'll get his karma and you know he'll get taken care of one day and you know I, I agree with him I shouldn't overexert myself I've been through enough with him and I should just let you know the universe take care of him but also deep down it's it's just it it urges my soul because if i know there's something i can do i'm gonna try to do it and that's also um yeah i i tried that you know i took it upon myself to go and report what had happened to me and um if your father was exposed would that put your mind more at peace i mean think so just because he is kind of already exposed now um I don't know if I I shared that um I had made my story public um and I had posted it on on like Facebook or you know something for I just wanted like if yeah, he's not in, in prison he's not in prison no so you know I mean posting about it definitely did help me in a way Yes, I think I think he he should be exposed. Um, but I also I don't think that I don't think his life can get lower than it already is now, because like I told you, he is going through a divorce. Um, you know, his house, their house is under foreclosure. Um, he doesn't my other siblings, they don't talk to him. He's still on drugs and he's still an alcoholic. And um, it's just the same old stuff. So we all kind of just like let him be. And so um, that's fine. But like I said, me personally, I don't, I don't think, 
I didn't think that it was right to keep in what I knew when he had he had another daughter and she was she's she's two years away from the age that I was when he started molesting me so I feel like deep down in my soul it was urging me to speak up about this now and confide in my stepmom and so that's what I did yeah and um she's going through the divorce with him um she doesn't really she's done with that um but it's gonna it's gonna be hard you know because I don't know how the custody is gonna work with their daughter and you know I don't know, but I do have people around me that are helping me with the process and um, my support system now is great. Um, Therapy would probably be great. What is it? Therapy would probably be great for you. Yes. I, so I don't have health insurance. So the state of New Jersey, um, there's uh, programs you can sign up for and they offer um, victims um, of abuse, you know, free mental health services. So. I, I had called like three different times and I even had an intake appointment once and they said, okay, we'll get back to you a couple of weeks and we'll, we'll assign you with your therapist. I didn't hear from nobody and it's been months. So it's just like, it, it boggles my mind. Like I understand these people are backed up, but you'd think there'd be quicker quicker ways to uh, provide help for the victims. Cause unfortunately some people they can't take it anymore and they do, you know, um, they have to leave. But um, I'm hoping to be in therapy soon, yeah, I am. Um, I would say for me, art is one of my biggest outlets for me. Um, I started taking art seriously when I was uh, in ninth grade. I started drawing um, and then I started painting Really, I love doing portraits, drawings, all that stuff. And then um, I turned it into tattooing. So these tattoos I have here, I did these all myself. And I'm hoping to be a tattoo artist eventually. There so I want to be in my own shop and, you know, just prove, you know, my family wrong. Because outside of my immediate family, the rest of them, you know, it's, it's hard. A lot of them also come from, you know, the drugs and the alcohol, and it's a lot of abuse going on. So I'm just hoping that I can make something different out of it and be successful one day. But, um, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Angelina, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish thank you lots so of luck. You're still young. You have lots of years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.